Well, a couple things. Number one is I rarely see any position in the business world where there's not some public speaking involved. Now this could be just you presenting to your team of eight people. Um, it could be you being called to present then that group's ideas to management or something else. So while I do get paid to present, um, the skills that you develop as in public speaking, absolutely, it's one of those things that just crosses all boundaries. So I believe that improving your ability to speak on your feet improving your understanding of how you can structure a presentation and have it be more effective uh, actually will stand you in good stead no matter I remember the first thing I did in public speaking was as a volunteer for a local organization I didn't you know so even people that think oh but I'm not going to be in business well are you going to be alive <laughs> you know are you going to be in the PTA at some point? Are you going to be a volunteer for your local church or community organization? You're going to need to do some public speaking. So as far as getting over the fear, fact is that even professional speakers sometimes get the jitters. I happen to have a presentation. <laughs> I'm doing this a week from today and just found out my co-presenter can't attend. We had crafted a presentation. His half of it is something I don't speak on. I have no ability to cover. Now that's not true because I'm going to figure out how to do it. But um, so one week out, I'm sitting here without my co-presenter, and I'm scrambling actually as soon as I get back to my office this afternoon to figure out: Can I get it, somebody to substitute for him? Can I get his information and get enough information from him to present it anyway? Um, is it way out of my league or is it something that once I hear what it is, I actually do know more than I think I do about it? Um, or can I shift all together and uh, sort of dump his stuff, take it in handout form so, it, so we're still keeping our promise to the audience? Because this is a promoted program. It's part of a, a convention. And it's already, the description is out there. You know, people are already picking what they want to come to. So I, I've got to deliver on that. I've got to deliver on that. But I personally can't deliver on that. So can I get his handouts, which are just in a rough form, of, as I understand it right now. They were actually due on Monday, so I'm behind deadline. I've lost my presenter. I don't actually know how I'm going to pull it off, but I know it will be good because I am a professional speaker, and so I can do this. Um, but having all the public speaking tools at my disposal so that that's not my concern, I don't need to figure out how to craft a story for this. I don't need to, there's a lot I don't need to worry about because I know have those tools. So I can worry about the part that actually needs my attention right now so that the audience that comes gets what they need to. So um, I may, in the next five days, interview probably 10 to 20 um, regulators and auditors and shift the part on his topic from the depth that he would have presented to, here's what examiners and auditors are saying right now on this topic. I think it'll be extremely valuable to the group. I don't think anybody's going to walk out of the room and go, I don't think she covered bullet point three because it will be covered. It just is not going to happen the way it would have if Roger and I had both been there. Um, but so that's a scramble that, you know, things go wrong. So do you think I'm going to be a little bit nervous? I mean, we started this with how do you get nervous? I will be nervous on that one. Let me tell you how I'm going to fix it. When I, uh, on the somewhat rare occasions now, but on the occasions when I am nervous, I always get there early and I talk to people who are going to be in the room. It's amazing how once you've talked to somebody and say, oh, why are you here? And they start telling you their story. And then you talk to somebody else. Now you have a personal connection with people, number one. Number two, you have validated that they are there because they care about what you're planning to share. And... Um, I just did something you should not do, and that is to say number one, two, and three when you don't have the third one. I had the third one, and it did go away. And what I'm doing right now is exactly what I do in a speech. And people laugh because everybody's forgotten things. I mean, that's the thing. Well, there are times when thing, people won't laugh at you or with you. Um, but actually, everybody in the room, most people in the audience, except in those political situations or whatever, they want you to succeed. They really do. They'll give you a whole bunch of latitude because they are probably also people who are a little bit nervous about speaking. And frankly, the reason they're there most of the time is because there's something that you have to share that they actually do want to know. 
I've seen really good speeches that were completely red top to bottom. But it was someone who was not a professional speaker, who had content that was clearly of great interest to the people in the room, who felt that the best way to be sure he got it right was to read it, mm -hmm. but it didn't come across. I mean, normally you would say, don't read your whole speech. Mm -hmm. This guy did, and it was well received. Mm -hmm. So the audience will cut you a lot of slack mm -hmm. if they are interested in your topic and you clearly thought through how can you best share the information with them. It is. You plan as best you can and then you're completely ready to go off plan. I think of it as an accordion. And if you think of an accordion, number one, it can get smaller or bigger. So if somebody tells you that your 45 minutes has just been cut to 20, you can do that. But also accordion does this, right? The handheld ones anyway. Um, so uh, if you stay audience focused, Oh, I mean, that's such a key. It, it, you got to go from 45 to 20. Okay, quit stressing about yourself and how the heck am I going to do this and think, okay, in the 20 minutes I have with them, what would be best to do for them? And then having some tricks. There are definitely tricks to it. Um, the, one of the tricks is you plan to do five points. There are five points on your handouts. It's clear that there are five points. Well, you don't say, I never apologize. You do not say, gosh, I'm sorry, I only have time for two. The wording is, you know what? I had five points. I definitely want to give you information on all of them, which is why it's in detail in your handout. For today, let's talk about two of them, the two most important, or the two first, or whatever. Now, they don't feel like they've missed anything. In fact, they feel like you gave them a gift by putting the rest of them in. And you can see how that would be so different than starting out saying, you know, I'm sorry, I'm out of time, and we're not going to make it, la, la, la. That's why, also, I don't use handouts that are fill in the blank. Because the fill-in-the-blank handouts, if you run out of time, it's obvious you ran out of time because you were supposed to fill in the blank. And people, no matter how good you were, the minute they know that you've left something out, then they get upset about it. Mm. If they never knew you planned it, what you did was perfectly fine. But if they realize you only got to point two and you planned to get to five, then they've somehow been cheated.